I was very fortunate because instead of putting me uh, behind a gun where I probably would shoot my toes off, uh, the same Lincoln Deller who brought me to New York called me from San Francisco Pearl Harbor week. And he said, uh, we've been caught uh, not only at Pearl Harbor militarily, but propaganda wise, we've been caught uh, without uh, radio stations going into the Asiatic area. And he says, I want you to come up right away and work with uh, the head of OWI, which is the Office of War Information. Had been Colonel Donovan's uh, uh, outfit before. So I went up there and we were in a mess. We only had one station going to uh, the, uh, the Far East and that was uh, KGEI, and the GEI was General Electric Incorporated. So we had the embarrassment of the United States having to clear our scripts through the General Electric before they could go on the air. So I uh, originally had the Chinese, Japanese, and Philippine broadcasts that I was in charge of, which was a pretty big responsibility that even I didn't realize at the time. And they immediately started sending area experts over from China and from Japan. And they sent Owen Lattimore over, who became the, uh, uh, the butt of, uh, Char uh, of, uh, of McCarthy uh, tirades against so-called communists in the government. And uh, Lattimore liked what I was doing, and he kept me on the Philippine broadcasts for five years throughout the war. And I formed a, a staff of 30, including uh, er, experts in five or six different Philippine languages. And uh, I wrote many of the shows and broke in many of the writers. And I was on the air quite a bit myself. And I, I wrote the, the Roosevelt speech for uh, our return to the Philippines. And it was rewritten many times, but I wrote the original. And I, I met FDR. Who was rewriting it? Huh? Who was rewriting that speech? Uh, great big name, I forget the name right now, one of the big playwrights from, uh, from Broadway. And uh, what was it like meeting FDR? Uh, well, uh, all I remember is his hand enclosed my entire hand. He had a huge hand. I didn't realize how crippled that he was, but he, uh, his son had to help him to his feet. And uh, I thought I had to say some kind of a joke to him, so I didn't pick a very good one. But I, uh, I said, you know, I said, you're not the only famous person to be on this platform. And he says, no, who was I? I said, I was last week. Here I am, a kid. So he went, ah, with that great big laugh of his. So at least I got one laugh out of him.